Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to talk about how to factor by grouping. So let's just jump right into it. So this right here is like the classic kind of basic grouping example. So I want to take a second just to kind of inspect this. So I've got AX plus AY plus BX plus BY. So just take a moment to notice that there is no greatest common factor in this polynomial. So there's no term that they all have in common. But there is something kind of strange about this. Um, so these two terms here both have an A in con common, and these two terms here both have a B in common. So when you notice that, that is usually what's going to kick off that you're probably using grouping. Also the fact that we have four terms, four terms and grouping, not always, but can very often kind of go hand in hand. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to say, okay, so I notice I've got A in common in these first two terms. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor the A out of the first two terms. So if I do that, what am I left with? X plus Y. Okay, now what about in the second two terms? What do I have in common? Well, now I have these Bs in common. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor the B out of these two terms. And now once again, I'm left with X plus Y. Okay, so now look at what I've done here. So this is kind of a, a trick of the eyes, if you will. So I've got kind of just these two terms now, right? So I've got A times this thing. This is its own like little term, and this is its own little term. So what do these two terms now have in common? Well, what they have in common is actually the X plus Y. So just take a second to notice this. Both of these now have the X plus Y. It's the same thing in the parentheses. So what does that allow us to do? Well, I can actually factor the X plus Y then out of this entire expression. So if I factor out X plus Y, what am I left with? I'm left with the A plus the B. So I'm left with the A plus the B. And voila, look at what we've done now. We actually have factored this thing. Now, one thing to note, it doesn't matter the order that you want to write this in. You can write this as X plus Y times A plus B, or you can do A plus B times X plus Y. Either way it works. And you can check this by multiplying these polynomials back together. So I've got A times X will give me AX. A times Y is AY. B times X is BX and B times Y is BY. So notice if I multiply all of this back out, I get back to the original polynomial. So that's how grouping works. Now to get you used to it, this, the first thing that I want to do is I want to focus on just this step right here. So what we're going to do for just a couple of exercises here, just get used to looking at this and this will help us out a lot with grouping. So in this example, so the thing that you're really checking for here is that what's inside the parentheses is the same. So this is X minus Y, this is X minus Y. So what that allows me to do is to factor out the X minus Y and then everything that's left over, so this three plus two Z, that's what goes in the other set of parentheses. So this is where I wanna start just to kind of get us warmed up. Okay, so why don't you go ahead and pause the video, take a look at this one and then hit play when you're ready. Okay, so for this one, there is a little bit of a, a twist, I guess. So notice that inside this set of parentheses, it says 3B plus 2C, and then the other set of parentheses, it says 2C plus 3B. But we know that that's the same thing, right? So even though they're not in the same order, it, it, they are equivalent to one another, so we're good to go. So I can write this as 3B plus 2C times 2A minus five. And so there we go. Now we've finished the grouping. Okay, so what about this next one? So once again, maybe you just want to take a second to think about it. Hit play when you're ready. So notice for this one, so I've got y minus z and then z plus y. These are not equivalent now, right? The minus sign actually makes these two different values, so we cannot factor any farther. So in this case, um, we, we cannot factor. So as far as we know, it's probably prime. Now, what's interesting, I'm going to show you an example in a few minutes where this isn't always the case, but for now we'll, we'll say that this is, this is prime. Okay, so one more here and then um, we'll move on. So once again, maybe you want to pause and think about it and then hit play when you're ready. So in this case, I do have the 4x minus 7. Those are definitely the same. So I've got 4x minus 7. Now, what do I write in this other set of parentheses? I've got 4z 
Now there's no number here, but we just have to kind of assume what's here. There's an invisible minus one here, so that's what will go in our other set of parentheses then. So that's how that one would work. Okay, so now we've kind of got the, the gist of how to factor these. So now I wanna look at these whole problems and kind of go through the whole thing. So going through this one together, so I've got 5x plus 10y and then xz plus 2yz. So focusing on the first two terms, so what do these have in common or what's the GCF between the first two terms? It would be 5. So this would be 5 times x plus 2y for the first two terms. And then in the second two terms, these both have a z in common. So I'll factor out the z like this. And if I factor that out, I'm left with x plus 2y. And so now I just did the check of are the parentheses the same? This and this, those are the same. So now I can just factor this out as 5 plus z and then x plus 2y or vice versa. Remember, it doesn't matter which, which way you go. You could also write it like this. Tomato, tomato. Okay, so that's kind of the idea behind grouping, but I do have four more examples. So it's kind of up to you if you want to continue going through this. Um, some of them are basic grouping and then some have little twists on them. So this would be a really great way just to quiz yourself to see if you're really understanding this. You can pause the video, hit play when you're ready to see the solution. So for B here, so if I'm factoring out, let's see, out of these first two terms, I can factor out 5x squared, which will leave me with 2 plus 3xy. And then out of these second two terms, so notice they're both negative, so I can factor out a negative 1, and I don't have to write the negative 1 there, I'm just going to, so it's a placeholder. So this would become 3 plus xy, 2, 2 plus 3xy. And so now I have the same thing again with the parentheses. So this will be 5x squared minus 1, and then 2 plus 3xy. Okay, so for C here, so now notice in the first two terms, so I got 3xy plus 4y, so they have y in common, so I'll factor out the y, so this leaves me with 3x plus 4. And then in the second two terms, so it looks like they have a negative 9 in common. So to be careful when you factor out the negative 9 because it's going to flip the signs of both terms. So factoring negative 9 out of 27x, that's going to leave me with 3x. And then factoring negative 9 out of negative 36, this will become plus 4. So just make sure that you've got your signs right. So now this will factor as y minus 9 and 3x plus 4. Okay, now for D, let's go ahead and give this a try. So I've got 3xy plus 6x, so it looks like I can factor out 3x, so 3x, so this will leave me with y plus 2 here. And then out of the second two terms, looks like I can factor out uh, 21, so that's going to leave me with y plus 2 again. And so now if I factor these out, I'm going to be left with 3x plus 21 and then y plus 2. Now wait, there is actually a little bit of a twist here. So I want to take a moment just to focus on this 3x plus 21. So when you look at that, notice there is actually a GCF in there. So what is the GCF between 3x and 21? It would be 3. I could actually factor 3 out of this. So if I take 3 out of that first set of parentheses, that's going to leave me with x plus 7. And then I've still got this y plus 2. So I factored this one down one more time to 3 times x plus 7. So this is just kind of a heads up that the GCF is something that can pop up at any time. And you might have noticed actually when you were first starting this problem, you could have just factored a 3 out right away. So I could have started by, let's see, I'll, I'll write this out here. I could have factored out 3, so that would leave me with 3xy plus 2x plus 7y plus 14. So I could have started this by just factoring that out, and then I would have grouped what was inside the parentheses. Now sometimes you're going to notice that and sometimes you're not. So the thing that you just want to be careful of is after you finish your factoring like we did here, Take a moment just to see if you can find a GCF. So like right here, there was a GCF, so then I had to go one step farther. So that's always something you just have to stay on your toes for. 
Okay, and so this last one is also kind of tricky. So let's go ahead and, and try to, to do our factoring. So in the first two terms, I've got 3x squared minus 48. So I factor out the 3, and that's going to leave me with x squared minus 16y. And then in the second two terms, let's see, it looks like I can factor out 2x. So that's going to leave me with 4 minus 9y. Now there's a pretty big problem with this one. So you'll notice that in this case, the parentheses are not the same. Now in a previous problem we saw that and we got to just call it prime, but actually there's, there's another check that you want to do before you throw in the towel. So when this happens, what you want to do is you actually want to rearrange terms. So I'm going to cancel this out and I'm just going to write a little note here. So we're going to try rearranging. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. So how do you rearrange? What do I even mean by that? Well, as you look at this problem here, what I want you to think about is just what, like if, if these terms were not matched well together, maybe how else could you organize this in a way that, that might match up terms a little bit better? So what I think of is I see this has a Y and this has a Y, so I actually want to put these two terms together and then I'll put these terms with just the X's together. Now, this may or may not work, so we're just going to try it out to see what happens. So let's see, I'm going to go ahead and write this out like this. And so let's start the process over again now. So out of these first two terms, I've got 3x squared and 8x, I'm going to factor out x, so that leaves me with 3x plus 8. And then out of these second two terms, I'm going to now factor out, um, let's see, 6y. If I factor out negative 6y, that's going to leave me with 8 plus 3x. Now just a, a heads up here, so be careful when you factor out the negative, that turns this, since you factor out the negative here, that turns this into a positive. That's why this is positive inside the parentheses. And now look, I've got 3x plus 8 and 8 plus 3x, so we know that's the same thing. So now actually the grouping does work. So every once in a while that will happen, and so you do just want to take a second to try rearranging and seeing if you can group that way. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. And so that wraps up this particular explanation on grouping, so hopefully it was helpful. If you got any questions, you can always leave me a comment. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time.